Yo, what's happening guys? King GBL here, and welcome back to a brand new Great League video. Today I'm going to be showcasing the Forgotten Flyer, none other than Noctowl. Noctowl got a huge nerf last season, with Sky Attack's energy being raised, and meaning that you get to the first Sky Attack in 7 instead of 6. It used to be 665 for Sky Attack, I believe it's now 766, which is a massive difference for Noctowl. As you've seen in that first game, the opponent instantly top lefts, probably thinking it was a power punch. And in the second game, we do have a Quagsire lead. I'm running a pretty classic team of Noctowl. Normally, this team was like Surf Etched and Metacham. I decided to throw in good old Annihilate just for good measure. I would have liked to use Polyrath, but it would be Ebi a week to Lantern. So I decided, okay, we'll go with Annihilate and Metacham. Basically, Noctowl double counter. Two seasons ago, this team is very popular, and I decided to bring it back for a video to see what we can do with it. If you do enjoy today's video, and if you want to see more videos like this showcasing some of the more forgotten Pokemon, of course, drop a like in the video, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts and opinions about the Noctowl nerf. I think at the time, Noctowl definitely needed nerfed. It was very, very powerful in that current meta. However, a lot of things have changed, and I honestly think if they rebuffed Noctowl and rebuffed Sky Attack, I don't think it would be quite the force that it used to be. We have many more flyers in the meta, and many more answers to Noctowl. Things like Chargebug have come into the game, Talonflame has been buffed, Gligar, and Metacham is nowhere near as popular as it used to be. Metacham got a hefty nerf, meaning that Noctowl doesn't really have as much usage as it would have had before. The one thing that Noctowl would be quite good for in a meta like this is of course having Shadow Ball coverage, which is still an amazing thing about this Pokemon, despite the Sky Attack nerf. And I quite like how well it does against Lickitung. Now the thing is guys, with the Sky Attack nerf, you basically get heavily outpaced by Lickitung, so that match now is super close, whereas before, um, it was a very, very dominant matchup for Noctowl. This might be a crazy suggestion, but I think if they rebuffed Sky Attack to what it used to be, it would be nowhere near as overpowered as it was before, just because of how the meta has shifted. The main flyer nowadays in the Great League is Skarmory. Skarmory does super well against Noctowl, and I think even if Noctowl had the original Sky Attack, I still think Skarmory would be the best flyer. Also, if you think back to the meta of a couple of seasons ago, uh, this is before Trevenant got nerfed, it was such an RPS matchup having Noctowl versus Trevenant. With Trevenant also being nerfed, it is much less uh, popular and common. However, Trevenant is making a bit of a comeback. Um, it's actually now ranked the number one Pokemon in PvP poke for performance, if you go into the battle simulations. So Trevenant, not quite as dead as you would think. However, not on uh, most teams as you would have seen before. Sableye and Trevenant, very, very popular before. And Noctowl, basically, the problem with Noctowl before was, Metacham has always been a very powerful Pokemon. And Noctowl was basically keeping all of Metacham's reliable counters in check. If you think about what counters in Metacham in those previous metas, it was things like Sableye, Lickitung, of course is very even with Metacham, right? This was before Dynamic Punch was even a thought. Um, everybody was using Psychic, of course, before it was nerfed. Noctowl was also keeping a lot of the grass types uh, hidden away. Things like Venusaur could not be a reliable counter to Metacham because you were very likely to get RPSed by a Noctowl itself. So Noctowl back in those days was a very huge problem. I do, however, think that with the addition of Counter Polyrath with Icy Wind, I would say that probably beats Noctowl straight up. I haven't simmed it, but I just know it probably would beat Noctowl because of the pacing. I think with the Spark buff, that would make Lantern just an even more reliable Noctowl counter, which would keep it in check. Also, in this meta, we no longer have Galarian Stunfisk as a main player. Galarian Stunfisk had a bit of a problem with Noctowl before. There was an IV spread that you could use that would give you a wing attack breakpoint and allow you to actually beat Galarian Stunfisk, a steel type of rock slide, with good old trusty Noctowl. So yeah, it certainly was an issue before, but I think it was a product of the environment it was in, and I don't think this Pokemon was necessarily the main issue with the meta. Back in those times, I did think that Noctowl was the main problem. The reason being is because, as I mentioned, it was keeping all of the Metacham counters in check. However, it has shifted so much, and the league is just completely different now. That a Pokemon like Noctowl could perhaps make people think twice about running Lickitung in every single team. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. I think it's quite an interesting Pokemon and quite an interesting discussion. The Great League meta has completely changed and um, even Pokemon like Cresselia right here are much more common and Noctowl does quite decently into them. Noctowl also does very decently into things like Defense Deoxys and yeah, it would certainly make people think twice about running certain things uh, very freely in the meta. So hopping into the battle tier, I've done two sets, I'm just going to show you guys every match. Uh, just to give you guys like the full experience, right? I want to give you guys the full 2024 Noctowl experience. To be honest with you guys, it's not a great experience using Noctowl in this current state. Um, like I said, its pacing is very, very slow. What you are seeing in matchups like this, it can do decently well. Now, the opponent comes into an Umbreon versus Annihilate. A match that you would think would be very dominant for Annihilate. However, you're about to see that Umbreon is a good boy. Umbreon's a very good boy. They got a, a Snarl head start as well, which makes it a little bit more comfortable for them. Uh, two foul plays all but KOs the Annihilate, and I'm basically forced to shield at this point. The opponent's running Azu on the lead, they've got the uh, Umbreon in the back. Very, very classic sort of team setup. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to win this match, but we're going to keep Ice Punching away here, and hopefully we can manage to win this match. 
Now, I can't really shield at this point. The Azzy will get to a move, so I decide, okay, we'll bank this, come into the Noctal. Basically, the opponent comes in, goes for the Snipe. I sort of need to get rid of this here. Um, I don't think I need to worry about charge moves. I basically need to try and farm everything down at this point. So we're going to go for one and throw for good timing. The opponent shields it. We're going to instantly get off the next Ska attack. And hopefully Noctal can look to farm everything down. I think what would be quite a good idea, actually, come to think of it, is Shadow Noctal. The opponent still has a move from Cresselia. We're going to go for the Grass Knot right here. Boom. That doesn't quite take us out. Noctal, still bulky as ever. We're going to punch it down with Annihilate. And we're 1 HP. The one counter does KO with the Umbreon. Super fortunate. Good games well played. The match came down to the wire. And in the first uh, set here, we went 3 2. Um, like I said, definitely had some awkward matches with it, but it is still a Pokemon that does well. Now, on this team right here, we have two pretty decent answers to Lickitung. Um, Noctal, you know, you would think it's quite a wall for it. But you're about to see here that even though the opponent gave me a free wing attack, this is still not that bad for Lickitung. What I decide to do here is get off a Ska attack, and I basically want to bank a Ska attack and go into Metacham. Um, the opponent comes into a Talonflame right here. We're going to look to go for a Ska attack, and maybe even go for a second one. Talonflame, a very, very tricky Pokemon for this team. But you're seeing here, Talonflame's the new guy in town. Noctal used to run these streets, but no longer. Talonflame and Skarmory are definitely running these streets at the moment. Um, the opponent does throw energy here, which is quite fortunate. I was just trying to wing attack it down into counter down range, and hopefully that still is the case. We're going to come in with Medi. I decide I'm going to try to go to Shield Annihilate here. Hopefully they flame charge as they go for the fly. Metacham, still as bulky as ever. As ever. And uh, we're going to go on ahead and get off an Ice Punch here. Try to get rid of the Talon Flame. The opponent in here makes a very foolish shield, in my opinion. My Metacham is basically dead. There's no point like taking alignment at this point. My Noctal is dead. My thing is pretty much dead. And they come into the Lickitung. Now, I do go for an Ice Punch here. Hoping that it would take them out before they get to a Power Whip. Unfortunately, though, Licky Too Thicky. They do get off the move here. So I'm pretty much forced to shield the Power Whip. Don't really want to get taken out here by this. And we'll see what the opponent comes into. Hopefully it's something Annihilate can deal with. The opponent comes into opposing Annihilate. Since we're ahead by one counter here, we can look to go straight for the Shadow Ball. It's very fortunate that the opponent decided to shield their low health Talon Flame. They have no shields for this left, and we can just basically counter this thing down. Good games well played. And you can see, like, Noctal definitely does put in some work. But you're going to see in this particular matchup, this would remind you a lot of uh, Shadow Swampert in the past versus Noctal. Back in the past, you had to use Shadow to beat Noctal with um, Swampert, basically, so the two moves would KO. But you're seeing here, guys, that we need to throw three moves, and by the looks of things, they need to throw three moves. So it's a little bit different to that matchup. You would think that um, a ground type versus a flyer would be a very dominant matchup for the flyer. It's not looking too great for Noctal here, especially if they get the debuff in the first one. Of course, the opponent does get the, uh, the debuffs, which is quite annoying, to be fair. I could probably shield and farm it down, but I decide, okay, we're just going to let this through. It's probably Skarmory in the back anyway. So we're just going to get an energy lead with the uh, Annihilate and look to start Ice Punching. They come in with a Skeledurge right here. This is looking a little bit tricky. Um, the game's been super laggy today here, so you're going to see a little bit of stuttering. It's not the recording app. It's just the actual game itself is quite laggy. The opponent goes for probably a disarming voice here. I'm going to try to basically get off one more move here with this thing. The opponent goes for a catch and that gives me a huge opportunity. I think I was just losing that game. I farm up to almost back to back Shadow Balls. And we're going to see this matchup with the nerfed Psychic of Metacham on Chargebug. This is a pretty good matchup for Chargebug, especially because they've got such an energy lead. So yeah, X's are coming through. One more X's and we'll get the job done. We're going to go for a Psychic here and basically look to try to maybe get off an Ice Punch if possible. This matchup is still not that bad for Metacham. Metacham is still really good. The opponent lets me get to this last move. They were trying to commit to the farm down. A little bit lucky there. And back in comes the uh, Alligator. I'm going to go straight for the CMP on the Shadow Ball. I think this could have been a very easy spot to beat in. The opponent's only going to shield this move. And I just need to hope that I can outpace to another Shadow Ball. We get to the Shadow Ball. I basically lose here. So hopefully we can make it. The opponent does not get to the move. So good games well played. Of course Shadow Ball will take out the uh, Skilladurge here. And we're going to hop into the next battle here. In the next game, we have a pretty negative lead. And you're going to see this is one of the reasons why Noctal just isn't quite the force it used to be. We're going to come into Metacham as our CF swap, which can do well into Skarmory and in comes Jellicent. This is basically a wall to Medi, especially with the nerf to Psychic. Two Psychics would have been pretty close to taking out before, as you can see here. That would have got a pretty close to 50% health. So at this point, there's basically no point in shielding, right? Like, they could go for Surf here. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. Maybe get off two Psychics, but I think here, I just need to basically load up with Noctal. Noctal's main benefit in this current meta is that it's still a very bulky, right? Like a nerf Sky Attack, but look at those surfs, they're doing absolutely nothing. So what I can do is absolutely load up an energy, eat two free surfs if I need to, and come out with energy for the Skarmory. That's basically what Noctal's good for now, just being a damage sponge, farming things down, and coming out with energy. That's basically where it's good. In a sort of one-to-one -one matchup, it's not very good with the pacing of Sky Attack and Shadow Ball. 
So we're going to shield up this move. It will look to pretty much one shot us no matter what it is. We could live a sky attack probably. And in comes a wish daddy cash. We're going to look to basically play the CMP tie every time. Of course here, the opponent's going to get every debuff under the sun. Because why would they not? I was using wish cash today and I went four in a row without getting a single debuff. That's why I sort of mentioned yesterday, I'm not a huge fan of moves like Scald, where it's 50%, you're flipping a coin for your matches, basically. Um, if the opponent does not get a debuff here, this match is much more comfortable for uh, Annihilate, but they flipped a coin, and they got the, the coin flip in their favour, and that's how that goes. I try to bank a move, unfortunately. I couldn't bank the uh, Shadow Ball. I go for a Shadow Ball on this thing. The Shadow Ball from Noctil does not KO the Whiskash, and this uh, Scald will all but take us out, or basically put us into farm down range for the Skarmory. So yeah, a little bit unfortunate, good games. Um, pretty much got team comped on that game, and it sort of just goes to show you, like, Noctil's not quite it. Here's another forgotten flyer that has been remembered a lot quite recently. It is Altaria. As I've mentioned in a few videos before, give it Altaria a different move. Give it Fly. Give it Aurelius. Uh, if you don't want to buff Noctil again, at least do something with Altaria. I think we do need a Pokemon like Altaria in the meta. Very, very strong and bulky Pokemon, and provides a lot of, uh, sort of good coverage, and it's a Pokemon that used to do quite decently into Lickitung as well. But of course, it's a little bit slower pacing now. And it's a Pokemon that sort of keeps Lantern somewhat in check. If one comes into a stun vest, we come into our Medicham, and in comes Bulky Azu in the back. Now, this is a matchup that Medicham used to be able to win with the original damage of Psychic. Boom, Psychic coming through. As you can see, it does absolutely nothing here. I am using Psychic instead of Dynamic Punch for matches like this. Even though Psychic is a lot worse than it used to be, it is sort of handy to have the coverage move. And again, similar to Noctile, Medicham's main sort of benefit is its bulk. So we're just trying to get off as many moves as possible here. I think I got the defense drop there, which is very, very helpful. It means that the Azu will basically uh, get taken up at one sky attack. Once again, it was a matchup that Noctile could do quite decently in before. Now, I'm just hoping that I can get to a move of Noctile. I just throw this move instantly. I throw it on free on bad timing here, but we're only getting off one move. doesn't really make a difference. The opponent lets it free. We're going to come for the counter down. The opponent swaps into Stunvisk, and yeah, that's basically curtains for them. So my final verdict on Noctile. It is still a very good Pokemon. Very bulky, very strong. The opponent instantly top lefts. Some teams like this don't really have a great answer for it. But I just think in this current environment, Noctile is no longer the chief. We get a 4-1 to finish out there, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, subscribe. Guys, we just had 3,500 subs on the channel. Thank you very much, everybody. By the way, you can see that I'm in the pits. I actually done a battle for Calamant Host. I think I lost 12 games in a row trying to get a win with Eevee, Vaporeon, and uh, Leafeon in the Open Great League. As you can see in this first game, we'll just show two of these battles. Two of these battles were pretty funny. Eevee versus Bastion. Seems like a little bit of a mismatch, right? But Eevee does have Dig, which is kind of cool. So we're going to go ahead and fire Dig. Boom, that does about 40%. The opponent doesn't really have to shield the move. And I'm hoping I can basically live this move and get off one more move of Eevee. We do live it pretty comfortably. I'm going to look to go for the uh, Dig right here. Now I'm expecting the opponent to have a Victory Bell. The opponent aggro swaps into the Victory Bell. And we're going to come into the Leafy on right here. I'm going to go straight for Leaf Blade. Even though resisted, it'll do a lot of damage from Leafy on. The opponent shields it up, of course, not wanting to get uh, taken out. And the opponent does win CMP right here, which is kind of unfortunate. They go for Acid Spray. Absolutely raging about that. I decide to shield even though I thought it would be an Acid Spray. Because I do want to get these quick attacks through. And try to basically put it in a farm down range for Vaporeon. In comes Vaporeon. And can anybody guess what it's going to be in the back? It's going to be none other than Wiggly. Um, unfortunately here, this is looking a little bit rough. But the opponent goes for an absolutely unnecessary catch. Now, I can win this match if I get a, a Liquidation debuff. That's basically what I need here. 30% chance. Come on, can I get the debuff? I can't, unfortunately. And this one Liquidation, unfortunately, is not going to take out the Wiggly. Boom. Maybe even if I got the debuff, it wouldn't have KO'd. But I think with the Water Guns and the uh, extra boosted damage on Liquidation, that might have just KO'd it. And as you can see, we went 0-5. So, you know, can I recommend this team to you guys? Should you be running Eevee, Vaporeon, and Leafeon in the Open Great League? Probably not, to be honest with you. However, after losing about 10 or 12 games, I think 12 or 13 games actually, we did manage to get a win with this team. In comes a Registeel lead. Registeel can basically one-shot Eevee, so um, I need to get off these digs if I can. Kind of unfortunate, the Great League is very, very difficult to play Spice in at the moment, especially hardcore Spice like Eevee. We're going to shield up the first move, it is the Focus Blast of course. Thankfully the opponent does not uh, go for the bait, and we're going to launch another dig at the Registeel. This will basically not quite KO them, they didn't have to shield that, they could have just went up two shields here. But yeah, I'm basically forced to let this go at this point. And we're going to come in for a very aggressive uh, Water Gun down with Vaporeon. Now, the opponent will make a Zap Cannon, of course. And, you know, of course they will get the debuff with the, uh, the Zapparoo here. Boom. We are debuffed. That does give us extra farm though, and we just about take it out in time. Now we're going to basically aggro swap into the Leafeon. The opponent's got a Pelipper. Now the one good thing about this matchup is, 
It takes them nine to get to the hurricane, so it's gonna take a while. And hopefully I can get off this next leaf blade. The opponent lets me get it off. And this is actually gonna do an absolute ton of damage. Boom, leaf blade coming through. And the opponent finally decides to throw some energy here. They do for the big hurricane, not allowing me to get to another move on Leafeon. We're gonna look to come into Vaporeon, go straight for the move. I don't want to eat any damage on this thing. And in comes a Wist Daddy Cash. We're going to go immediately for this move. Can we get the debuff this time? We do not. But I might not even need it. The opponent goes for the first Mud Bomb. And this is going to be a race. They're going to be four off the next Mud Bomb. One, two, three, four. We just about get to it and get the CMP time and do take out the Wist Cash. So very, very sweaty team there by the opponent. A very classic sweaty team in the Great League. And we do manage to take it out with Eevee, Vaporeon, and Leafeon. So if you guys are wondering about the ELO, that's basically why I'm super, super low. I actually played out the rest of the set with the team to see if I could get a better win. Unfortunately, I didn't, but thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about Noctal in the comments down below, and I'll catch you guys next time.